says going live, hangout is on the air. Mm-hmm. Usually we do a nice little like five, four, three, two, one thing, but apparently not this time. Um, but yeah, we're broadcasting uh, the hangout now, and um, to, to everybody watching, um, this topic is um, reality's a cake, not a light switch. Um, kind of moving out of that uh, left-right paradigm sort of thing, you know, to where reality is a variable configuration of the ingredients that interact, and if you change the slightest little thing, it becomes an entirely different take cake, whereas the light switch mentality is, it's either this or it's that, and not both, and not something else. Man, those, those, those Democrats, they're, they're worse than those Republicans, or, oh, them, at least the liberals aren't as bad as the conservatives, or blah, blah, blah. It's really just two wings of the same bird, you know. Uh-huh. Um, re- re- Republicrats, uh, <laughs> caniverals, uh, libservatives, uh, demicans, whatever. It's all just the same, so... We're here with uh, General Tate. No, he's not really actually a general. That's just his name on DeviantArt. General yeah. Tate. Dot, general Tate. Dot DeviantArt. Dot com, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. That's me. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> so, um, anything you'd like to share on that? I know we were going over a variety of different examples of stupidity and practical application when it comes to these sorts of paradigms. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, humanity is it's just one giant thing after another, you know, you got one side who says, no, I'm right, you got the other side who says, no, I'm right, and then you've got logical people who are stuck in the middle going, trying to make sense of the whole thing. That's pretty much, that's pretty much the kind of, uh, what's the word? situation we're stuck in at this point. You have people trying to make sense of something that is completely and utterly illogical and sometimes insane. And it can lead both sides to do crazy, stupid, insane things that just absolutely do nothing but make the situation worse and the experience on this planet all much worse. So it's not about blame and punishment or reward or anything like that. It's more like everybody's got their own different expression of, of the same level of three-year-old immaturity and two different types of tantrums being thrown. And it doesn't matter if you refer to tyranny as some um, communism or socialism or democracy or what fake label you put over it um, when you're trying to jam your beliefs down everyone else's throat and saying our, our way is the only right way and if you don't believe as us we'll hurt you we'll imprison you we'll kill you that is being a Nazi no matter what mm-hmm. you what, what little pretty bow you want to put on it or fancy label just like during World War two you know not everything was quote unquote Hitler's fault all sides were being tyrannical Nazis over here in the United States she had concentration camps for natural born citizens who just so happen to be of German and Japanese descent. Um, Eisenhower also had concentration camps after World War II for German kids even and they just he just left them exposed to the elements to just rot there and die. And Patton refused to follow Eisenhower's orders about those concentration camps, and oh gee, right after that, what a coinky ding Patton gets hit by a car, and oh, so tragic that he had that accident, you know, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, we sided with Stalin, he was killing tens of millions of his own people, not to mention all the others he was killing, it was just like, it was this big old genocide party, all sides were funded and sponsored by the, you know, corporatists. Banksters, if you want to call them that, funding all sides of the war. Because, you know, war and genocide is the most lucrative business that, that there is, and people don't realize that. People think, 
oh, it's you know, it's it's about religion or it's about race or this guy said that and that other guy doesn't like that or whatever, blah blah blah. To make it all ideological, but no, it's all about profits. It's all about if you can get two sides fighting, you know, then you can create money hand over fist, you know, because those weapons they cost money to be produced and they can be bought and they can be sold. And, you know, it's just it's it's insanity. It's it's psychopathic, but that's how you keep control over a population, keep them fighting, and make hand, money hand over fist while doing it, and then. You, the psychopath elites up at the top, can, you know, live the good life while everyone else is in shit. And the funny thing is, is it's everybody else giving them that top 1% permission to do it. So I don't blame the elites. I just think the elites are an inevitable result of our own collective suicidal Stockholm Syndrome or our need to ha have these babysitters so we can blame them when things aren't going our way and we can throw our tantrums and whatever. And right now, humanity is just in a process of growing up and realizing, oh, we've been a bunch of hypocritical little bitches. Maybe uh, we might want to snap out of that. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, you just look at history, it's just kind of this repeated tragedy upon tragedy. You know, you have these moments of enlightenment where humanity goes through a renaissance and a flourish of ideas emerge and you have all of these great ideas and inventions and and generally at those points in history that's when the elite want so what you would call uh, suicidal or filled with just this absolute bitter discernment for humanity you know and hopefully in the modern age um, we may eventually it's some point, depending on world events and how quickly people wake up to what's going on, you know, which every day more and more people wake to the problems that the world is facing today and realize that it's not so black and white, that it's not just one side or the other, that it's all just one central problem. And, Hi. you know, if humanity just kind of wakes up to that, it's, just, you know. Ooh. Daphne has joined us, apparently. I have, and I got surprised that we're live. Yeah, um, we're definitely um, in, in the middle of a, a broadcast at, at the moment. Um, that's, that's what I had wanting, been wanting to uh, do with you guys here for, for a while, and I guess now finally we're aligned. The Hangout title is Reality is a Cake, Not a Light Switch. And oh, one of my favorite topics. Yeah, and we're talking about the, you know, left-right paradigm dichotomy versus, you know, the more expanded uh, view of things and just, you know, kind of moving beyond the idea of uh, the blame game and all that and just kind of um, looking at it more logically to where it's like all these different expressions of, you know, just doing stupid shit and being a stupid little bitch and... You know, there is no good guy or bad guy. That even in, in during the Holocaust, it's like all sides were like the same Nazism being expressed in all these different ways. And it doesn't matter whether you take tyranny and label it as communism, socialism, or democracy. And all sides all spout about freedom and how, how good their philosophy is for you. But um, really, any... any uh, viewpoint that has to be enforced by a gun and under threat of punishment has nothing to do with freedom. I mean, that's pure tyranny. Yeah, absolutely. Something that um, something that popped to mind when you were saying that was about... Um, have you seen that video of the veteran who addresses uh, the Obama administration about uh, gun control and about how it's supposed to be about freedom and courage and uh, you know his thing was about courage and if it was supposed to be this courageous thing to pass this act why was it done in the middle of the night when nobody could do anything or see it or whatever why was it hidden yeah 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 I, to I totally remember that I mean mm -hmm. I, I think bands are totally stupid in the first place it's like yeah, if we ban guns, no one's going to use them. Well, damn, you know, 
why didn't someone ban murder a long time ago? Isn't it a shame that that's not illegal? Oh, wait a minute. Right? It's speeding. <laughs> oh, it is illegal. But people still murder. Oh, yeah. shit. Well, I guess banning things don't actually prevent them. In fact, it amplifies them. Because when you ban guns, now the people that aren't going to obey that law, that are going to keep their guns, can now have an open season on the asses of the people who were good, little, obedient, law-abiding citizens and gave up their guns. Now it's open season on their asses. Now they have no means of protecting themselves from the criminals, because a criminal doesn't care about the law. It's why they're called a criminal. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Uh, if they had, I, I, I just, it just baffles me that they are can still continuing to do things and you know, suppress the people when the whole reason they're doing it is to prevent the criminals from doing more. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's such a silly thing because there's, you know, or even if they're trying to prevent accidents from happening, well, guess what? You know, even if you make, you know, Billy Redneck jump through all these hoops to get his gun legally, he's still not going to store it safely no matter what. You know, he's still going to do what he does, or maybe he's just going to, you know, maybe it's going to cause him to do things he wouldn't normally do out of disdain for the fact that he doesn't have the freedoms that he should. Well, it's, yeah. beyond, it's beyond that. I mean, it's, it's really a controlled dichotomy. It's like, you know, take it out of the hands of the average citizen to be able to defend himself, you know, uh, leave it to the hands of some psychotic government who can't even uh, take care of its own problems, like the national debt, you know, prevailing issues to do with foreign policy, you know, world peace, et cetera, so on and so forth, all of the bullshit that they babble on about, you know. Um, it, really what it boils but down really, to... They, they, they create all those problems for profit. They create the wars, mm -hmm. they create the unrest, mm -hmm. they create oh, the debt. absolutely. Even just on a smaller scale, like the our state government, if they if there's extra room in their budget, then they're going to go above and beyond that so that they don't have to give anything back. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's just it's you know we live in it, the government essentially. If there were no problems, there would be no need for a large, overgrown overfunded government. There would just be no need for it. There'd be no need for judges. There'd be no need for lawyers. There wouldn't be any need for this large, overly inflated judicial system with the largest incarcerated population of any first world country per capita if, you know, citizens were allowed to defend themselves. And this can be clearly seen if you go back to the 1840s through, you know, the early 20th century. Um, you have all of these things to do with, uh, you know, crime and all of that stuff. You got, like, uh, Jesse James, some of the famous uh, robbers, you know, what happened? It was, it all boiled down to, you know, dueling it out, you know, versus yeah. the sheriff and versus the criminal. The and you know what, look at the criminal Dillinger. And the criminal went down. And really, it's kind of the opposite. It wasn't the Wild West. It was a very polite West. The East Coast was the wild place. And that's where all of the quote-unquote civilization was. In the yeah, East. look at Dillinger. Uh, the, uh, the, why did the people love Dillinger? Easy, because back then there was the awareness that it's the bankers that were the criminals against the people. And Dillinger was simply a vigilante that saw that local law enforcement would not do what was needed to be done against these banks. So he decided to send the bankers a personal message and let the bankers know that if the bankers go too far, that the people are not going to tolerate it. That's why Dillinger was a hero of the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, even back in the 1820s, people like uh, Andrew Jackson were huge. Jackson and No Bank. Yep. That was his campaign slogan, yep. Jackson and yep. No yep. Bank. He was huge against the bank. And one of his, when he died on his deathbed, 
you know, they asked him, what's your proudest life accomplishment? And he said, I defeated the bank. I got them out of the United States. Temporary. And afterwards, as a result, we saw one of the biggest, most prosperous uh, times probably ever, you know. Oh, looks like somebody else is in the call. Yep, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi. Wow, this is really aligning here. Uh, yeah. You know, I really wish uh, that, you know, along with the bank thing, if somebody could really pull off, like, a fight club <laughs> bank <laughs> blow up. Like, for real. If that could be, if that, you know. What do you that mean? that was possible. Well, just literally, like, you know, people so focused on the greater good of the people, although they seemed like terrorists and that they were, you know, quite the opposite. I mean, imagine the type of freedom that would happen if, you know, all of that was just, you know, like, what would that do? Like, that would totally kind of clear the slate and there might be some anarchy for a little while, but, you know... There, there would be people with better ideas stepping up to the plate quickly to, you know, help regulate that, I think. You know, but it's just, you know, nobody's, nobody's going to do anything on that large of a scale. It's going to be these little individual things and people talking about it and people questioning it and, you know, like there's a bringing up the light of the problem and eventually they're not going to be able to skirt the issue anymore. There's going to be too many people going, what the hell is going on? Ingredients like, in, the, in the cake, so to speak. <laughs> right. So, Jay, what are your observations on this awakening process that's going on as everyone's reflecting their issues to each other and people are getting increasingly more pissed off and, you know, whatever else they're doing? Uh, what's What's your take on this whole process of moving out of the left-right paradigm and into a more conscious, cake-like awareness, and usually it's taking a, a boot to our heads. Uh, oh, and it looks like um, General Tate, um, he just got booted out of here, and he's, he's got to come back. Um, he's messaging me on Skype. Just... I'm not sure how familiar he is with um, using Google Hangout or not, so kind of helping Looks him like through he just this. Came back. Yeah. Ah, there he is. Okay. Yeah, cool. It kicked me out. That happens sometimes. It happens yeah. sometimes. Don't worry about it. We're cool. uh, pretty experienced with that, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll happen well, from time to time. Well, the shift uh, of the paradigm is going to happen in a number of ways. Some's going to be, some people are going to be totally aware of what's happening. Some people are going to be like fish and just swim no matter what it is. It'll just seem like a normal day to them. Nothing out of the ordinary because it's all internalized anyway. Uh, then you'll have others that it, it's going to seem like their life is ending. They're just getting run through, run through the ringer. Yeah. And those are the ones that are resisting it. If you're not resisting it, but you're, uh, you awaken, but you awaken in a different way a lot of times, where you, it's second nature to you instead of uh, coming to the surface. There's no, there's no self sabotage. Is what you're saying that right. the, the, the the program is kind of programming is being ironed out more smoothly. So there's little to no self sabotage. Whereas the more you resist it, it's like you're creating that negative feedback loop. So it's like, as soon as you see that there's something to resist, you know, that even quantum physics as observation creates the reality. So, um, you know, it's like when you're not believing that there's a brighter side to anything and you're just all in this dreary shit, then you can perpetuate that dreariness with, with relative ease because it's been your reality. But now when you see there's this silver lining around the clouds, so to speak, and you're like, no, that can't be, that's against my belief systems, then that silver lining kind of gets brighter and brighter 
the more you resist it. And it's like so bright, it's like irritating your eyes. The more you resist it, so to speak, and it, you get kind of like an abundant shock, and you're looking at the at this brightness that keeps coming, and you're like, "Fuck you, brightness! You're defying my reality. My ego can't be justified now. Screw you!" And you're going more and more into these self sabotage mechanisms, and just it's this big battle until. Uh, eventually you just get desperate enough to just surrender and be like, all right, fuck it, I'm going to stop micromanaging my reality. I'm going to be open to new ways to experience reality, and I'm not going to insist that everything must be shit, Heil Hitler, because that's the way it's been and always has to be, and shit's the only real reality, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because that's what Nazism really is, you know, that insistence that, you know, my way or the highway, fuck you. Well, it also gets to a point where they're arguing about it that it has to be their way or no no way at all. So that's that's perfectly fine as long as your way is for you and not mine. <laughs> My way is for me, you know. Yeah, so but it's when we force that on others. Is when you're then you're violating, yeah. say, uh, the law, so to speak. Or even when you're forcing it on yourself, because there's no differentiation between forcing something on self and forcing it on others. The, the, the brain doesn't even know how to differentiate, because from the, from the most basic perception of the brain, everything is an internal experience. The brain is, is inside of itself, experiencing itself, and, you know, all of your external limbs are just, you know, ways of, of bringing data in that is processed and experienced internally. So it doesn't really know the difference between judgment of self and judgment of others or anything like that. It's more holistic. So when you when you rage outward, you're simultaneously raging inwards and that creates like that that nasty internal battle that creates all these psychological dilemmas. Then here comes big pharma. Like, oh, are you fighting yourself? Well, no problem. Here's some chemical denial for you. Take this wondrous drug that will create for you a hundred more health problems. <laughs> and it's like, yuck. Yeah, and you know, the pushing beliefs on others, it's like, just because they're quote-unquote serious topic that means that we have to like shove our opinions on others it's like my favorite color is pink and I'm pretty sure that none of you have your favorite your favorite color is pink so am nope. I going to shove it down your throat to like well no damn it you have to have the favorite color of pink because that's my favorite color and that's the best color in the world you know and if you don't like pink then you know go go kick rocks like, well, no, I mean, because it's silly, it's just the color, but for whatever reason, we've put so much emphasis on, you know, these big topics, you know, at some point, you know, it was a little topic, and now it's created into something so much bigger that we have to, you know, we have to face it. Believe in our Lord and Savior, the color pink. If you don't believe in the color pink forever, are you going to burn in the fires of hell? Well, that a lot of that, a lot is what causes it to turn from a molehill to a mountain is your emotional investment in it. The more you most, the more you most um, emotionally invest in it, the harder it is to break away from it. Yeah, then you can psychologically project, and when you're treating yourself like dirt, then it's like everybody else's fault. Oh my god, they said something I didn't like, and I'm choosing to beat myself up emotionally about it, but I can't face the fact that I'm choosing that. So I'm going to psychologically project it on them and go, you fucking prick, you're making me feel miserable. You stop that, or you're a meanie bad guy, pissy face, and you suck. <laughs> Well, it's just part of that, you know, that self-loathing paradigm, like we were discussing earlier. I mean, you know, you you've got to get you got to get above the the personal what you. Oh, it looks like um, General well, Tate just got booted again here. <laughs> He'll be right back. But um, yeah um. As far as what he was saying, it's all about 
owning your emotions because you can't change what you don't own. So ironically, it's like you have to give yourself permission to feel like shit in order to own that so that you can choose to not feel like shit. I kind of frame it in the idea of like, you know, imagine somebody's hand, you know, you get, they're putting two plates in front of you. One's a shit burger, like literally, like actual shit. And the other one's a hamburger. And you're being asked, which one do you want? Well, if your only real reality from your belief systems is a shit burger, you're going to eat that shit burger and you're going to go like, oh my god, that shit burger is forcing me to eat it. Oh, that terrible shit burger, that demon Satan. I wish I could have the hamburger over here, but the shit burger is the only real reality. But when we own that reality and be like, all right, well, I have the right to eat that if I want to, and it's my choice, and I'm eating it, and I really don't like that, and I think I would really like to choose to stop doing that, then you could choose the hamburger, because now you've owned that instead of seeing it as this external aggressive force that's holding you up against the wall and making you do anything. So when we own our emotions, we kind of end the negative feedback loop and the fog subsides and the clarity steps in and we realize, oh, now I don't have this all this resistance. I can actually choose what I prefer instead of thinking all oh, this negative emotion is is my enemy that's external, this monster stalking me. So Nate or Tate can pick up from there because that's where he left off when... Google dropped his ass again. Yeah, I just love Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a conspiracy. Okay, where was I? <clears throat> uh, you were saying exactly on the same sort of thing I was saying, and I was just kind of stalling for time while you were returning. Well, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, it's like, you know, the way you may see something as compared to the way somebody else sees something are two different things. And it's the antithesis of a free society to force and push and, you know, with all your might, you know, accept my belief system or face the wrath of, you know, my armies or go to hell or, you know, that that's the complete antithesis and the opposite of freedom. And I think... Beyond that, I think that's kind of what the Founding Fathers also understood. They realized that, you know, free ideas and free thinking and, you know, accepting everybody regardless of their views is what makes civilization flourish. The idea that we can all come together regardless of our backgrounds, regardless of what we think or feel, is what, you know, is really the highlight of, you know, democratic society, true democratic society, not, you know, this two-party paradigm that, you know, just completely plays on this audio loop of the same talking points, the same crap over and over again. That That's not what, you know, true freedom is about, you know. It's about coming together regardless of what you believe and being able to build a civilization because of it. I mean, you know, Instead of, instead of having this, you know, tyrannical type thing where it's like, you know, like you like you said, you know, uh, accept the color pink, and if you don't, you know, you're horrible, you're a mean person, you, you're going to go to hell, blah, 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 blah. That's essentially my big point there. Well, exactly, and you know, what really baffles me is that a vast majority of the stuff that we're told that we should believe isn't even real. Mm -hmm. It's not even truth in it in and of itself. You know, we they tell us one thing and they say that you know you have to do this, you have to be this, you know, and if you don't, then you know you're a piece of shit. But in reality, it's not even something that's attainable for the vast majority of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or they or they or they put like an extreme minority of fundamentalist nutcases on the mainstream TV and say, see these guys, these represent the majority, you know, all Christians are fundamentalists and all Christians are, are going to force their religion on you and they'll hurt you and they'll they'll kill you to, to, to go to that aim and oh, those, those Muslims, they'll do the same thing as those nasty Christians, only they'll strap 
bombs to themselves, and they'll blow up school buses full of children, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's like, and just because there are an extreme minority of fucking wackos that actually do do that shit, that are government paid and sponsored, even though these wackos don't know they're government paid and sponsored, it's just, it's kind of like kicking sand in the bull's face, that's the government's role, and then, you know, the bull charges, and of course the bull's going to charge at whoever just so happens to be in the bull's way. And then there's the mainstream media videoing the bull going, oh, all bulls everywhere are evil, this is what bulls do, so we must go, you know, bull aside all the bulls, because bulls are from Satan, and... You know, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like the mainstream takes a minority of nutcase wackos that were instigated by the corporations anyway, these minority of, of, of clinically insane, dangerous people, and project that onto, you know, hundreds of millions of people and say, yeah, and this little minority example is exactly how this whole big, huge group is. So then that pits big groups against big groups because they all think that each other is crazy and dangerous. When really most of the people in those groups are just trying to live, you know, day to day. I mean, it's like, you know, what are you talking about, you know, Muslims or Christians? Like, I've never known, I mean, even of the most fundamentalist Christian families, I have never seen anyone raise their little kids to be like, Okay, little Jimmy, see those Muslims over there? When you grow up, you're going to get to kill you some Muslims. You know, I mean, I have never seen that, like, taught in any sort of church or anything. And then, like, with the, you know, on the Muslim end of it, it's like, you know, these Muslim parents are going, All right, little Habib, when you grow up, you're going to kill yourself some Christians and win your virgins. And, you know, that shit doesn't happen. That's a total stereotype. It's only in the minority of cases where it happens. And when that minority is like 10,000 people, it seems huge. But when you compare that to hundreds of millions or like a billion people, that's like a drop in the ocean. That doesn't represent the majority of a group. We get all this racial prejudice, this religious prejudice, and everybody's more alike than different. They just don't know it. Everybody's just trying to live their lives in peace. Everybody's, you know, kind of going insane by the economy and, and, you know, struggling day to day and their own personal problems that they're dealing with. They don't have the time or energy to waste on plotting to go to war against some other whatever. Government is the one that has the time to waste on that, not the individual person who's just trying to live their life in relative peace and survive. Well, exactly, and the government itself is the minority. Think of how extreme our politicians are. We qu classify oh, yeah. them as right-wing or left-wing, and somebody who's kind of in the middle is considered wishy-washy and isn't committed to anything. And it's like, are you kidding me? That's how the average person is. It's usually somewhere in the middle. You might have somebody who leans a little more left or right, but the average person is somewhere in the middle. But then the average person feels like they have to submit to a mold. They're like, well, I'm in the middle, but that's not allowed. So I have to indoctrinate exactly. myself to to Democrat. I have to indoctrinate myself to Republican. I have to indoctrinate myself to conservative. I have to indoctrinate myself to liberal. I have to be Christian or Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist or whatever. Because if I don't, then society's going to shake its finger and go naughty, naughty. You've been so bad. You're a pariah of society. Shame on you not conforming. You're horrible and you're going to burn in hell and blah, blah. So to avoid all the emotional pressure, this ridicule and rejection and all these fear of abandonment issues and fear of being alone and all this and that. We try to force ourselves to be exactly who we're not. And it's like, like a slow death inside. We try to conform to what parents want, to what teachers want, to what our peers want, to the newest fads and trends, styles of clothes, and just like everything. And we know in our heart that it's all fake bullshit. It's against ourselves. And it just feels like this 
death dying inside a little more and a little more. And then TV commercial comes on. Oh, feeling like you're dying inside? We got a pill that can help you with that. Sure, it'll give you a hundred other different diseases. But hey, we got this great medication. And right, I always like the uh, anal leakage or whatever. I'm like, really? Like, that's worth whatever it is that you're trying to give me, plus the 400 other side effects that... <laughs> I'm going to have to take 200 other pills just to counteract the side effects from this one? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. That's, yeah. You're, really, you're really doing me a favor. Oh, they did that to my, my Nana, and I about lost it when I found out. She, she literally had five different medications just to counteract the side effects from five other ones. Ugh. So Yeah, I, that's nasty. Yeah. We got but her, it's, all, uh, it's, it's all about the self-abuse and fitting in shit. Because if we would just give ourselves permission to be ourselves and not care about what the fuck everybody else thinks, we wouldn't be putting our body through that stress. People like to think that emotions and psychology have nothing to do with biology, but hey, you've got a, a, a freaking central nervous system that's energetic, that's running through that biology and controlling things. When you're stressed out, you have stress hormones that are pumping constantly through your body and those stress hormones are so corrosive that doctors, uh, surgeons actually use those stress hormones as a part of uh, medication for like when, when someone has like a heart transplant or some other organ so that that body doesn't reject that organ because the rejection process is caused by the immune system of the body fighting against the new organ and the stress hormones will literally shut down the immune system so when you're constantly stressing yourself the fuck out trying to fit in you're shutting down your immune system and then we wonder why we get sick oh why why am I always feeling so tired and, and drained and I'm getting these flus and these colds and this and that? Can't have anything to do with my depression now, could it? Oh, my thyroid gland just went straight to hell and now I just gained six million pounds. Gee, that can't have anything to do with the fact that I'm becoming perpetually depressed because I'm going against who I am and trying to hopelessly fit in with society. I mean, what the fuck? It's part of the it's part of the neuro control paradigm. I mean, you know, you get all these giant mega corporations who are not only raking in trillions of dollars. I mean, it's just an absolute perpetual perpetual crime that, you know, when you become so aware of what's going on, when you're so, when you become so awake to the to the reality of how dire the situation is in some ways, it just makes you sick at your stomach. You know, you see all these good people whom you care for and you love and you want to see go to high places and reach the stars and you've got all these sick psychopathic freaks you know brainwashing and propagandizing and yeah. slamming it down saying this is how it has to be it has to be this way it can't be any other way you know and then you watch your loved ones and people around you just you know freak out and stress and worry about, you know, well, what is this person going to think about me if I don't wear this or that or the $700 suit that's from, uh, you know, Macy's or whatever. I mean, you know, you, we live in this complete and absolute, it's part of the control paradigm to keep us locked in this grid of, you know, it's don't think outside of the box. Yes, it's, it's, it is it's, 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 You know, it's genocide hiding in plain sight. It's cultural genocide. Because people people think that genocide is killing a, a large group of people. Well, that's only half the definition of genocide. The other half that people miss is that it's killing them for profit. When when uh -huh. when cor when corporations come out with some new drug that they know is is fucking dangerous and it's going to kill people, um, they put it out, and then when it does that. People don't see it as genociding a population because the corporation, you can either say, oh, well, that corporation was being negligent. They were run by idiots. Or, or, yeah, exactly. Kill. So then the, it's, the it's, insurance. It's, it's, basically, it's basically like the Nazis going, oh, we're just going to fluoridate the water to, you know, three parts per million. Don't worry. It'll only kill you in 70 years. You know, you'll. You know, you'll your brain's gonna rot out, and you're gonna have Alzheimer's, but your teeth are gonna be as clean as a bell. 
you know, don't worry about it. It's 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 only it's only for the goodness of you. You know, it's 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 only slow kill. And people don't revel. It, it's like putting a frog in a yeah. cold pot of water and turning it on slowly. That's what yeah. they're doing. They're well, slowly that's what the turning up the heat. Is. That's what the insurance companies are for, though, because if, when these corporations have insurance companies and all these deaths happens, instead of individuals being taken up on genocide charges, you've got corporations being sued in lawsuits, and then there's payoffs to the families of the victims, and then the people who committed the genocide can just keep on committing it. That's what the mm -hmm. lawyers and the legal system and the insurance are there for. And yeah. we've been brainwashed not to see it as genocide. Mm -hmm. But it is. Oh, it's absolutely genocide. You know, they develop these weapons and these chemical weapons and these biological weapons designed to kill 90% of the population. And then on top of that, they're making the food that we eat. And then they make the medicines to make us better from the side effects of the food we eat. And then they make medicines to counteract the medicines that we take that are trying to make us better. But in reality, <laughs> humanity is capable of doing things without their help. Mm. Government should only be set in the parameters it was originally designed to be in. You know, the Founding Fathers warned of giant government. They warned of those things. They warned exactly. of, you know, the corporations getting involved. They, they were very adamant on it. And I've always been of the state of mind where money should have no place in politics. It should be nowhere. The word politician should not be in politics. That should be a curse word. You call a man a politician, that should be demeaning to his character. If break, anything, down, we should break, have. break down politics and it means many blood-sucking insects. Exactly. And look at them. They are. Some stereotypes are true, in fact. Yeah. I mean, you know, they wouldn't be calling them stereotypes if they weren't necessarily true in some cases. Yeah. Look at you governmental. Know. That means control the mind. Mm -hmm. there That's you exactly go. what government does. And in any free society, it should be the absolute antithesis of that. It should be the opposite. You know, yeah. the government should be in support of the people. You know, why do you think we wrote the Declaration of Independence? It wasn't dependence. It was yeah. to get away from that. You know, we wrote the Constitution, which guaranteed our rights, guaranteed unalienable rights that can't be taken away, that were guaranteed guaranteed to us by the Creator, you God, know, you know? Yeah, you know, that's another misnomer people have, by the way. They think that the, the Constitution gives you their rights. No, those rights are in, inalienable. That's why the word is used, you know? Mm -hmm. whether, whether, you see, right. whether you want to see it as your DNA or God or the universe or the Tao or all that is or however you, mm -hmm. you want to perceive that according to your beliefs, that's something that you came into this world with. Government mm -hmm. does not give it to you. It's not it's not, it's not like back in the old days where it's title, it's entitled to you. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege. It's not a privilege. It's a basic human right. It's a human yeah, right. Yeah, you were born with have. that. The yeah. only time you don't have it is if you choose not to exercise it. But then it's still your choice. It's not anybody taking it away. When, you know, we see you know, like a, a cop, you know, like taser the shit out of some old lady or something and Everybody's standing around too terrified to interfere because they don't want that to be them. Um, you know, that is that is them allowing that atrocity to You're continue. Just, because when you stand by and do nothing, you are just as part of the problem as, you know, you're part of the problem at that point. If you're allowing government to absolutely have uncontrolled, un, you know, abridged authority, yeah. yeah. At that point, absolute, it's, you know. At that point, it's up to everybody around to totally like jump that cop and like beat the hell out of him and put his own handcuffs on him. Then use his own radio and radio in for police backup and say, "Hey, this cop just assaulted this old lady. Was tasering her. Um, we need an ambulance here and we need a squad car to come up and pick uh, pick up this piece of trash." that uh, you, you mistakenly hired into your police force. Well, the problem is, I wish, the only thing with, you know, I, I wish we were human beings, I wish human beings were like insects in the sense it's like, you know, you hurt one of us, you hurt us all, and we're going to freaking storm you and take care of the problem. Unfortunately, humans have to be built up, you know, it's kind of a build-up phase, you know. Humans yeah. go through the, the denial, and then they go through the, 
the facing the facts and the reality that they don't want to face, but eventually they get pushed to the breaking point, and when that happens, all bets are off. I mean, look at how long the American Revolution took to, t to actually yeah. take place. And yeah. such and such is the phrase desperation breeds genius. Exactly. And uh, da Daphne's saying that she had to go to, to dinner and um, she's saying thanks for the conversation. She's looking forward to the uh, next one and um, she's telling me to have uh, you send her a uh, a friend request on on Facebook. So I'll I'll give you that uh, that information. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I got about a half an hour until I got to go, so. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it is what it is, you know. It's, we, we're living in crazy but interesting times, you know. In some ways, you can say, a lot of people would say we don't have any hope as a race, but I think we have plenty of hope as a race, and I haven't lost hope in humanity yet. It's not yeah. over, you know. You know, people also like to say that, oh my God, the world is getting worse and worse and worse. It's actually not. It, it's getting better. And even though mm -hmm. that creates cognitive dissonance at first, I'll make it real clear as to why it's getting better. The world only appears to be getting worse as our awareness expands. Our awareness of all the nasty, vile bullshit that has been the case for centuries, if not thousands of years, our awareness is increasing, which is going to create the illusion of things getting worse. Also, think of it as like imagine you could, if you could time travel back to, you know, ancient times, and you take one of the one of the primitive peoples, and you um, you you put them, you sit them down inside of a bus, and you start that bus driving. Well, there's one there's one of two ways that he could perceive that. He could either understand that. He is actually in a motor vehicle, and that vehicle is moving forward, and that's what he's seeing out the windows. Or he could think that he's in a stationary building, and someone casted this evil demonic spell on the land, and the land is just rising up and jumping around and changing its per, you know position and doing all this nasty demonic shit. So there's you know one or two ways he could perceive that. So if we realize that our awareness of all this nasty shit that's been going on is increasing, that means the world is getting better because mm -hmm. only in a world getting better can our awareness increase. If the, if the world was getting worse, our awareness would be decreasing, not mm -hmm. increasing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and the Bible even describes that, you know towards the end of the program, if it, as it were, you know, you have the increase of knowledge, you know, we can travel to and cr fro across the faces of the earth. I mean, look yeah. at the Concord. Uh, yeah. it went, it apocalypse. Went yeah, know, apocalypse. It apocalypse. Went, apocalypse means uh, the revelation of knowledge which was once hidden. It doesn't mean the destruction mm -hmm. of the world. Well, no, no. It's, it, as, as I've always viewed it, it's the death of the old and the birth of the new. Yeah. Exactly. It's 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 the giant transformation. It's like leaving. It's like when we die, we leave our old shell behind, and we transcend on to the spiritual realm of things. You know, it's not a death. Yeah. There is no true definition of a death. It's yeah. just the well, end this, of the old and the yeah. birth of the new. It, well, this physical reality is holographic anyway. It's made of light. I mean, if you look at what atoms are made out of. They're made of pure energy. So, you know, that's just that's basic science. So, energy has no volume, no mass, no nothing. Energy is just light. So, it's like, gee, how can light, which has no, no mass, no nothing, come together to make solid things that have mass? And the answer is that, well, really, it can't. That's just an illusion of perception. And illusion doesn't mean, oh, that doesn't exist. It, illusion means our understanding of something is flawed, and we're mm -hmm. making a whole bunch of assumptions about it. That's what illusion means. So with this um, uh, this awakening, you know, if your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and the chair you're sitting in are all made of the same stuff, um, with this awakening process, instead of the idea of like dying and going to the next life or, you know, like how Elijah or whoever it was ascended into the higher realms and whatever. It's more like we have the opposite process going on. 
equal and opposite inversion that the entire reality around us is actually what is in the process of ascending into the higher and higher realms and any any structures any any one anything that can't handle the intensity of those changes is basically getting the checkout ticket so that's why you're seeing all of this destruction and all this chaos you know it's like hot extremes of hot and cold coming together and creating explosions you know so it, it's just you know that is the ascension process so to speak and it's it's chaotic <laughs> it really is these new agers think of it as like this nice pleasant bunnies and kittens sort of things it's like no it's like this this hazing it's these explosions of consciousness facing our inner Nazi and it's, on the inside. it's absolute controlled chaos yeah and facing our outer Nazi on the outside and uh -huh. earth earth uh -huh. changes and everything it's just just this total clusterfuck and that's what a that's what a birth is isn't it look at look at a birthing process it's chaotic when a uh -huh. woman gives birth holy shit dude so that's mm -hmm. we're giving birth to the new world. Giving birth to that better world is not this gentle bunnies and kittens thing. It's pain and screaming and agony until it's over. Mm hmm Yep, and we're just in the chaotic process of it. And it's you know it is what it is. I mean, you know, we're here for the ride, you know. And you know, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a wild ride, you know, and it's like being on a roller coaster. You know, you go through, you go through, you eventually reach the climax of the ride. Well, we're on the other side of that climax. You know, we're headed back to to port, and before you know it, the ride has ended, and it's the beginning of a whole new ride at that point. A new, yeah. a new frontier. So right now we're just in the situation where, well, I mean these are archetypes and constructs, so don't take me absolutely, but just fig figuratively speaking at least, where the greatest good and the greatest evil and everything in between are equally possible with equal ease. Because if you really look at it, it we have a paradigm to where we think it's just, it's so, so easy for things to be completely difficult and we think it's so so difficult for things to be totally easy is there any longer a difference between ease and difficulty or did I just nuke the divide between the two mm -hmm. yep it's um, it's it's really just kinda how society kinda brainwashes it into you. I mean, you see it even in the public school system. I saw it firsthand, you know, uh, junior year in high school, you know. I questioned the teacher one morning about, you know, eugenics and all that stuff, and she's preaching, you know, the typical, you know, bullshit that they teach in schools about eugenics, how it's not true, how genetics has nothing to do with humanity, how, you know, genetics does not affect who we are, but yet, somehow it still affects everything else around us, but that doesn't apply to humans, et cetera, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. just like Hitler, just like Hitler, the quantum physics. As you Quant understand as you understand, Hitler believed in eugenics, so that does that mean you are Hitler? Do you wanna be Hitler? And that oh was, God! That, that was the kind of game that they're playing, and then yeah, you know, Hitler also believed that the sky is blue, just like the rest of us. Exactly, so should we claim? Should exactly. we claim it's purple? Should we claim it's purple just to spite him, and then call anyone who says it's blue anti-Semitic? Exactly, exactly. And you know, I just dropped the argument at the beginning of class because I wasn't going to get into an argument with her. And then she, and then she goes on into this tangent. Oh, you did the right thing. You 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 corrected yourself. You shut up. You submitted. And I'm like, oh, you lying, slimy little. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know. you, you you count without the O. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, I did not submit to you. I just shut my mouth because I didn't want to get into a big screaming meanie fight with a woman who can't handle the truth. Yeah. You can't handle the truth. Yeah, really. You know, and it's just like, um, you know, just like the whole um, quantum physics 
aspects of things and like, you know, how people look at quantum physics and they go to one extreme or another. They're either like, that doesn't exist, that's pseudoscience, it's airy-fairy. I mean, despite how many millions of dollars have been put into experiments that absolutely prove it does exist. And then there's the airy-fairy New Ager types take it to the other direction. Oh, if we sit here and meditate and think happy thoughts, we'll float off into the fifth dimension and everything will be butterflies and kitties. It's like, no, if, if you raise your vibration and expand your light frequency, now you can see everything that's in that dark room that you're sitting in. So you can see all the shit that you have judgments against that you're going to see and perceive as monsters attacking you because you haven't figured out how to remove your judgment yet because you're still judging everything negatively. You know, it's like they're like, oh, shun the negative. Get away from that or you're giving it power. It's like, wait a minute. Judging neg the negative negatively is negative. And judging uh -huh. the negative as a positive opportunity for positive change is positive. So when all these little hatey, motherfucking, lovey, lighty bitches that are in total delusional denial, when they're like, ooh, gets me away from the negative, I don't want to empower the negative, they're judging that negatively, so they're already in alignment with the ne negative. Uh -huh. They're only deluding uh -huh. themselves into thinking they're positive, when really they're being pure, hardcore negative, with no positive whatsoever, and they don't even realize their own hypocrisy. Exactly. Yeah, and it's it's like it's also like with atheism and Christianity. You know, you have the atheists who sit there and they'll scream, you know, oh, b biblical fairy tales, and they will go to the end of the earth trying to, you know, with all their might, you know, blocking out all any extra intral evidence, you know, that would point to the otherwise. They'll sit exactly. there until the end, and they'll say it's biblical fairy tales, but if it's truly fairy tales and you believe that, why does it bother you so much? There's obviously and, and, something there that you don't like to hear, or otherwise you wouldn't be going to such crazy extremes to try to disprove a theory over and over again with the same result that leads to nowhere. C.S. Lewis figured it out, and he was one of the most brilliant English authors that probably ever was next to J.R. Yeah. Tolkien and you know you know what I love it out. you know what I love I love how a lot of these atheists um if I say something they don't like they're they're ad hominem trolling me like a little three year old oh you're stupid only a moron believes that and Blah, blah, you're just ignorant, you're low, you're stupid, you're just all this, like, baby insult bullshit, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, you're, t you're saying you're the intellectual and I'm the dummy, but all you can do to back your point is name call, like a three-year-old, and I, and I said, I admit my own biases, and one of my biases is this is exactly the attitude I expect from atheists, I don't take atheists, Seriously, I don't take most of the Christians seriously either, or most of the New uh -huh. Agers, or most of anybody, because all they do is they walk up like little Nazi ass bitches and say, Because your views are different than mine, fuck you, you're scum, I'm not going to respect you, I'm going to shit all over you, and you're going to open your mouth and eat it and like it because I'm superior to you. And I just uh -huh. laugh, I'm like, You just lost all credibility. Exactly. You know, you're saying I'm non-credible. You just lost all credibility because I'm not sitting here bashing on you, but you're all like, you're stupid, and blah, blah, blah. I tell people atheism is just theism with an A on it. It is a religion because religion just means to bind, what to bind, the, to narrow the mind, to lock into a strict doctrine. As a matter of fact, science is referring to it as a doctrine now, by the way. Did you know that? Scientific doctrine. I laugh. I'm like, how are you not a religion? Mm -hmm. It's like the famous quote from, uh, it was either, I believe it was Aristotle. He said, when the argument, re when the argument reduces to slander, the debate is lost. Totally. When you, re when you reduce yourself to nothing but name calling, the debate is over. And you just admitted in your own low level, trashy way that you lost the argument. Exactly.
And I've dealt with liberals that are like that. I've dealt with fellow conservatives that are like Rush Limbaugh. You know, they're they're the mainstream apologizer rhino types who sit at hometown buffet and gorge themselves on cheap food. And then I've dealt with, you know, atheists and New Agers and just about anybody. You know, but anyway, yeah. on the fi on the final note with that, I mean, that's just kind of what it boils on down to. You know, you but know what's What's funny with me, if I may say, adding to your point and agreeing with you totally, is that um, with me, I you know, I look at all sides and I see you know, there's some things I agree with, some things I don't, and other things that you know are totally different from either too. And all sides see me as the opposite side. Like liberals will think I'm conservative. Conservatives will think I'm liberal. Um, the quote-unquote negative NWO, Alex Jonesy people will think I'm a delusional, airy-fairy New Ager, and delusional, airy-fairy New Agers will think I'm just one of these, oh, negative NWOE, Alex Jonesy, ew. Everybody thinks I'm everybody else, because it's like, gee, mm -hmm. if I'm not kissing their ass, then I must belong to the box that they think is their enemy. I wish I could, like, get all these people into one room to have a debate about who and what I am and watch them all go, no man, he's a liberal, no, he's a conservative, no, he's a new ager, no, he's not one of us, he's one of you, no, he's not all, one of me, mother All you have to do is sit that. back, all, you, all we'd have to do is brew up some popcorn, get some good real sugar sodas, and sit back and just eat some deep dish pizza and watch the show unsue. Yeah. Because they would sit there for two days straight <laughs> red-faced, bloody-eyed, and tired, arguing with each other until they fell asleep. Over exactly. Who They'd be like, no, he's a conservative. And they'd sound like a bunch of screaming little toddlers who were arguing over a Tonka truck. Exactly. And it would just be so fucking funny to watch because you would be like the parent. We'd be like the parents going, ha, look at this. <laughs> I mean, I would, love to, I would love to see these people totally get together and debate about the topic of who and what is Dave Kelso. What box does he belong into? And get a representative from each of these boxes so when one says, no, he belongs in your box, the other person can go, no, he doesn't, motherfucker. He belongs in your box. No, fuck you. He belongs in your box, you prick. And just watch it really get up and going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would be great, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and for people who want to move beyond the whole, like, feeling of, you know, that whole, like, I'm sabotaging myself in order to gain acceptance and, you know, that idea that everybody has to like us and all that. I look at it this way. Um, would you uh, Would you feel bad if none of the flies want to buzz around you because you're not a piece of shit? Would you try to make yourself into a piece of shit? Would you roll around in fertilizer to win the acceptance of flies? Of course not. So when human garbage, human shit rejects you, take that as a compliment, Absolutely. not as an insult, not as Absolutely. something to sabotage yourself about, not as like, oh, they don't accept me, so I'm worthless, and i got to do better, and da-da-da. Laugh and go, wow, I'm on the right track. Or as David Icke has said, um, it, it's something to the effect of, um, in, a, in a completely insane world, being called insane is a compliment, is a good sign. He's like, oh my god, I would freak out if this insane world said, hey Dave, you know, you're normal, you're, you're completely good, you're normal, we like you. He's like, I would freak out if this world said that to me. I'd be like, oh no, they think I'm normal, am I becoming a sociopath? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <it's> like... <laughs> good morning, Dave. He's normal. He's normal, Jim. <laughs> He's not a psychopath like the rest of us. He's experiencing normalcy. How the hell is that possible? I don't know. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid you can't do that. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, I think you got about ten minutes before you have to go, and then um, I'm going to end... Um,
this after that. So just to let everybody know, we got 10 minutes, give or take a few minutes before we bring this conversation to a close. So um, any final thoughts on anything? No, no, not necessarily. I mean, it's just, you know, for me, it's just kind of more of a regurgitation and an interesting re-perspective on things I've known, and it's always good to hear perspectives from all different views, because when you hear perspectives from different views, it just furthers your understanding on a topic all the much more. It's just valuable. Why don't you tell us real quick about what you were telling me earlier about, like, the people on DeviantArt who were like getting all pissy about semantics within like the the graphics for the gun pictures and stuff and then, oh, yeah, totally then you is. threw up that one picture and they all stopped trolling you because they were like oh. yeah if I discuss that here they're just gonna go back to doing it again because they're just little they're probably not even going to watch this because I cater to a completely different audience <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then Wednesday, and then Thursday, or well, I'll be back Thursday. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> Welcome back. Yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah. So why don't you why, why don't you fill us in on that? Because that was kind of a funny story. Well, you know, they bash you on. Inaccurate stuff, and I did a lot. A lot of the guns I did were, you know, back in middle school when I didn't know much about guns. I mean, you know, I knew a little bit about them from what Hollywood movies I'd watched, like you know, Heartbreak Ridge and you know, Blurbs of Rambo here and there, and Sniper and blah blah blah, you know. But you know, being in the firearms community, nobody knows because nobody on the internet really knows me and I'm fine with that and I don't give a shit and I'm kind of happy that way and you know you get all these morons who come on there you know who a lot of them who live in the UK and wherever else you know they think they know everything about everything and they're like you know well fuck you cunt I know more about this and that and you stole this because I made it first and it looked similar so I'm gonna bash you on this and it's it's not yours because I say it is, and because I've seen one that's really simple, similar. So post the co the code, you effing cunt. You know, they 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 use they essentially use these uh, insult upon insult upon insult to try to back up their point that somehow I'm just a no good rotten piece of crap because you know I'm displaying creativity and I'm threatening their little empire and they can laugh and dismiss and do whatever. But you know. You know, and then when I think with that logic, it's like, okay, so why don't you, if, if it's that logic you're going to go by, you know, why don't you just give credit to Magpul or okay. give credit to Magpul or, uh, you know, Armalite or Colt or, you know, for any of the guns that you're making or any of the parts you, you're using or Ishvac for all the AK stuff. But no, no, you know, I have to give credit to them and bow to their superiority because their stuff is so cool and they waste so much time you know <laughs> making these renders they spend months on this crap you know who knows how much time they're wasting masturbating to it you know <laughs> sitting there on a computer going oh my god they're so sexy look at me <laughs> mental <know>? masturbation <laughs> yeah exactly it's like it, it, it's like nobody cares man I've got a life to live I'm sorry <laughs> that my guns don't look good some of my guns look at, you know, I look back on them because, you know, I'm a real firearms guy, and I look back on a lot of my stuff and I laugh at it because it's just, it doesn't look good. It's a fail, you know. A lot of my stuff is blocky and it's not shaded and it's, you know. But I have a few of them that I'm very proud of that I worked on that, you know, I did a good job on that I look at and go, yeah, those look good. Those could be real, you know. I could do something with that, you know. And, you know, it's just it's just funny, you know. These people sit there and act like copyright Nazis, thinking they know everything. And it's like, no, why don't you just give credit to Dr. Noob or give credit to the company who actually made the product in the first place? If you're going to go by then that, you, then, then you uploaded a picture, which shut them up. Which, what, what was that picture? Oh, it was a picture of me holding an STG 44 Sturmgewehr MP43, which was basically the very first 
technical assault rifle, and it was a full auto. It was a beauty. It cost me sixty dollars to shoot it. And no, for any troll that might be watching this, he did not show me how to shoot a gun. I know how to shoot. <laughs> and for any for any trolls that might be watching this, on both your Deviant Art account and um, in this chat here, you have the red and yellow logo emblem um, that seems to be a bit of communist in nature. People are gonna either be like, "Why is that there?" Are they gonna be like, "Oh my God, you look Stalin or something or whatever." Why, why don't you explain why that's there? I totally love Stalin, right? I mean, yeah, I'm totally just some mass murder and dictator <laughs> freak. I mean, I'm talking about the freaking Constitution, for Christ's sake. And <laughs> that makes me a devil, doesn't it? I'm a con, <laughs> right? Why don't you go? So why the- is that? Why is that there? Just to just, just to troll people, or like? No, I just I I just like it because it's a badass symbol. I just love it. It's cool. <laughs> to me, the I mean, yeah, in a. It, a lot of people, you know, who believe in that red history stuff, they scream, you know, oh, red revolution, oh, that's a mass murdering symbol. The red represents the blood of all of the innocent slaughtered, and it's like, eh, not necessarily, you know. God said to reclaim titles to the kingdom of God, you know, you know, take all of these Greek symbols and Greek stuff and give it back to the man who, whom you should be crediting. And as far as I see it, the hammer and sickle is the ultimate representation of democracy or republic in the sense because, you know, it represents the common man. And what has the common man been represented all these years by here in this country? The United States, the Constitution. The farmer. Yeah, the farmer. The, the, the average worker. The average man, yeah. The common Joe, the man who makes the country happen. Without him, there would be no civilization, essentially. Exactly. And, you know, people people can take it to a ridiculous extreme and say, oh, that, that just proves my point. You're a communist son of a bitch. Go kill yourself, you know. But it's like, no, I'm not a communist. Why don't you go actually look at my fucking DA page and tell what kind of communists actually post pro-U.S., pro-Israel, pro-United States Marine Corps, pro-U.S. military crap, and pro-Christian. <laughs> You're not going to find a communist. Well... Like just so, just so people know, by pro-Israel, I don't think you mean pro-Mossad and pro-false flag and pro No, I do not. I, do not I think you mean pro-Jewish, not pro-Zionist. <laughs> no, I do not mean pro-New York Jew. I mean pro-Israeli Jew. And I can tell you right now there is a heavy difference between the two. And I can tell you yeah. Netanyahu and all of those people are not, you know, the insane Zionists that are all made up is these mass murdering freaks and Netanyahu's just doing what he has to do in Gaza and I'm sorry but you know both sides of this Israeli thing's been going on for years it's been a years and years and years and well really, I just you, the way I see it it's all false flag shit just like here you've got the Israeli government that is in with the Illuminati or whatever you want to call uh, them. And uh, everybody outside of that is the people. And yep. the job of the government is to get the people divided, conquered, distracted, and fighting. Uh-huh, so it's, uh-huh. uh, it's the government of Israel that is bombing the innocent civilians in Gaza. It is not the people of Israel. I'm not, and saying, even the, I'm not saying the people even of the Jews, Yeah, even the Jews over there, I see pictures of rabbis burning the Torah and burning the Israeli flags, holding signs saying, we reject Zionism, Zionism is, is an abomination upon Israel, and all this and that. And, you know, I see Jews and Muslims and Christians uniting together, you know, over in Israel and the Middle East and, and things like that. So it's really the Israeli government is just like the American government. They're best buddies. That's why we give Israel so much money. And we also give Israel and Palestine, or Israel and the U.S. also give Palestine money. And the, the Palestinian government is just as guilty of the war crimes as the West. And you oh, can't, yeah. And you can't just blame Israel and go, oh, my damn fuck. Yeah. And you can't just blame Israel and uh, the U.S. for the innocence, quote, you know unquote, what? innocence being slaughtered there. They're, and and any an analyst saw this coming from the get-go. The, the way Muslims, I... What the extremist Muslims like to do is they like to put innocent people out front, use them as shields, and then when... And, you know, they antagonize the West and poke at the West with a stick, a sharp stick, saying, you know, die, you know, Western scum. And then Israel responds with airstrikes, you know. Then they go, ah, the West, uh, look at what they've done, you know. 
when they're hiding weapons of mass destruction in apartment buildings and schools and you know they use they use the people as shields just as much you know we're throwing fuel on the fire and they're throwing fuel on the fire and the fire just perpetually gets bigger you know and at the same time we also have to acknowledge that just like um, Al Qaeda was created and is still run and maintained by the CIA. Yep. Hamas, Hamas is, uh, is was created by and run by the Mossad or the uh -huh. Israeli the Israeli part of fucking Wall Street. Uh -huh. So whether you're talking about the American government, the Israeli government, Hamas or Al Qaeda, they're, they're all in the same club. They're uh -huh. they're you know. Why, why do you think Hamas is never destroyed? I mean, shit, we got the biggest mil military in the world. We could send them into, into Gaza and go through every freaking tunnel floorboard and everything if we wanted to and fish Hamas out and hang his ass out to dry. The reason we don't is because, you know, our government, which is run by corporations, likes all the genocides and the false flags, mm -hmm. and they get, to, they get to test their weapons. It gives and sell them their a weapons. reason to exist mm -hmm. in the state that they're in right now. And it's just, it's just this perpetual ritual of suffering. And really what it comes down to is it isn't even, there's a lot of people within the governments like Netanyahu and people of that nature who believe that they're genuinely doing the right thing. And I don't, I don't think Netanyahu's dirty or corrupt like, you know, politicians here where they're very aware of what's going on and they know what they're doing and they know what they're a part of. It, but it, it just comes down to, you know, the bankers are in control. They own the purse strings. They control the suffering, the misery, the, you know, they're fueling the problems we see in the world today. And humanity is with, with that, I would like to end this off pointing out one thing, too, that that because we're all human in this, you got to understand, those globalists, as nasty and psychotic as, as they are, they genuinely believe that they're doing the right thing. They have their mm -hmm. own indoctrination, and it goes like this, and I think... Um, that Ed, Ed Bernays summed it up pretty good. They think that they have a responsibility to humanity to rule it and govern it and keep it in check because they think the average person is not capable of independent sovereign thought and that if they tried to teach people sovereignty that it would just destroy the world. So to say, they're destroying the world to save the world because they don't even realize their own sickness. So they have their indoctrination and their sickness, and we have ours, and both of them interplay. Our sickness is we have a sickness that we need the babysitters, or so we think, and the babysitters have a sickness that say we need to be babysitters, otherwise the world is going to be destroyed. So they can justify all levels of genocide, all levels of greed, all levels of everything to the greater good of the continuity of the human race. They can blow this planet to kingdom come in the name of the greater good and they don't realize how arrogant and sick they are any more than your, av than your average sheeple realizes how equally arrogant and sick they are. Two sides mm -hmm. of the same problem. Yep, two sides of the same coin. And it all connects and coincides. All I can say is we're living in interesting times. Um, oh, yeah. You know, the free people of the planet, the ones who are aware, <laughs> we're in for some interesting years ahead. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, all I can say is, you know, Godspeed, and I just hope we all make it through it. That's all. Which I'm pretty confident we will. I'm not concerned about me being annihilated or killed, a lot of it's just globalist rhetoric, you know, they just yeah. try to pump you full of fear propaganda, but... They can only know. do things to the point that we believe them and, and we let them, because their, their plans all depend on our ignorance. The, the, the more of us who are awake to an idea that they had, the, the less likely it is to happen, because mm -hmm. people... Alex Jones used to make that mis mistake, I think he's learned from it now, 
But people, you know, people are like, oh, well, the elites are planning this and blah blah blah, and they treat it like a prophecy, like, oh yeah, it will happen. Then it doesn't happen, and people laugh at them. And it's like, look, the truth of the matter is, is yes, it's true that they were planning it, but a bunch of psychopaths planning something does not a prophecy make. It just means a bunch of, a bunch of psychopaths are, pro are planning something. It doesn't mean that it's absolute, guaranteed, definitely going to happen, and especially when their plans depend, absolutely depend on our ignorance. You know, making knowledge of the plan available all pretty much guarantees that it isn't going to go down. So mm -hmm. that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, the more we expose of their plans, the more we prevent them from being able to carry out their plans and in the ultimate sense, put humanity into a perpetual, continuous cycle of a thousand years of darkness. <laughs> we are, and as Alex Jones says, we are the resistance. But, before you can act physically, you must have a revolution mentally. You yeah. must awaken to your surroundings before you can deal with the problem physically. The heart and the mind need to work together instead of the mind always trying to dominate the heart or the heart always trying to dominate the mind. And then that will also end up with males and females understanding each other and working together. And then that will result in liberals and conservatives understanding and working together. And Democrats and Republicans, left, right, up, down. Things will start to, to integrate. Polarities will integrate instead of segregation and, and the fighting and all this little three-year-old toddler crap. Yep. Anyway. So, this has been good. Um, people mm. can check out General Tate's um, art and journals and whatever at uh, generaltate.deviantart.com, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's it. You can check out my stuff at paradigm dash shifting.deviantart.com and um, you could look up for Daphne Dugan who was on earlier you could find her um, search on Facebook for Intuitive Daphne um, you can find her Facebook page that way and if you uh, look up Daphne Dugan um, you'll find her on YouTube and you know so on and so forth uh, Jay doesn't really have a page that I know of and uh, no one else has joined us so that, for this one, so there's no one else to uh, put out a shameless plug for. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I guess that's about it then. Um, I know you got got uh, places to go. Yep, I do. It's just, you know, it's part and of that. I, really, uh, I don't feel like rambling on all by myself tonight, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, I'll just close uh, we, this down. We, so. we can continue this conversation some other time. Make a reality yeah. as a cake number two. Yeah, and maybe Daphne will have longer to stay, and who knows? Maybe we'll have some other people on, like Kristen or Rochelle or Katerina or any number of people that may or may not feel like you know, joining us and popping in. So we'll we'll see what, what we align with and, you know, if we could shake things up and make things more interesting next time around. So take care, everybody. Thank you for listening to our, our insane but sensible rambling. And um, I'll see you next time. Have a good evening, all. Okay.